In September of 2010, Stephen Skinner and his son were driving from Chicago to Las Vegas, Nevada. There, Skinner was going to help a family member remodel her home. He and his son also planned to do some gambling. On the way, their GPS accidentally directed them toward Las Vegas, New Mexico instead. Within a few miles of crossing into the state, trouble began. I'm going to pat you down for weapons and have the dog run around the vehicle, okay? I'm doing about five miles over the speed limit. The state trooper, he sees us, so he pulls us over and he asked me if he could search the car. That search didn't nothing. turn up any weapons nothing. or drugs, but the police did discover something else. $17,000 Skinner and his son had in their luggage for their two-week trip. This boy has 3000 right here alone. He says, what are you doing with all this money? I said, we're going to Vegas to help my sister put our house back together and have some fun. It's my son and I. After two and a half hours of aggressive questioning, the cops let the Skinners and their money go. But their ordeal was just beginning. Further down the road in Albuquerque, they were stopped again. This time, the local police accompanied by federal agents. They went immediately to the money. Wait, so they, they took the $17,000? They took the $17,000. What, what crimes were you charged with? We weren't charged with any crime. No crime at all. So what reason did they give you for taking all your money if they weren't charging you with a crime? They didn't give us a reason. Skinner and his son were victims of a controversial law enforcement practice known as civil asset forfeiture. Under it, local police, often working in cooperation with federal authorities, can seize people's money and property simply based on the suspicion it might be tied to a crime. Since 2001, nationwide, police have taken more than $2.5 billion in cash from people who have never been charged with a crime. I uh, went to college here at New Mexico State University. And Brad Cates is a prominent New Mexico attorney. We met him at his ranch in Las Cruces. All of the protections we know in our Bill of Rights are abrogated by the very nature of asset forfeiture. Most average folks aren't walking around with 20 or 25 or $30,000 cash. First of all, most seizures are not $30,000. They're way lower than $30,000. Secondly, last I checked, it's legal to own money in America. And in order to take it, you're supposed to have a federal judge get a warrant. Coming from Cates, some might find that strange. It was Cates, as a high-ranking Justice Department official under President Reagan in the 1980s, who helped establish the aggressive use of civil forfeiture. Uh, now there are 400 federal laws for which you can invoke asset forfeiture. That was never your intention. No, no. Now, as a result of cases like the Skinners, New Mexico has become the first state to abolish civil forfeiture outright. Kate's helped state legislators write that law. Fred Radosevich is the president of the New Mexico Police Chiefs Association and the chief of police in the town of Edgewood. What percentage of seizures do you think were righteous seizures on the part of law enforcement? The vast majority of them. There's not a lot of people that have hundreds of thousand dollars in cash when they're driving down the highway. While Radosevich says exact numbers are hard to come by, He's confident most forfeitures by departments like his, even those that didn't result in criminal charges, were justified. For New Mexico police, he says there were rules. We always had to go and make our case to a, to a district court judge to show the court that we took that money for a reason. Radosevich also sees another problem with the new law. Beyond the loss of a powerful deterrent, it means the loss of a large source of revenue for police departments. What do you think some of the more serious repercussions will be? Well, we're not going to have the resources available to commit to drug enforcement, whether it be vehicles, whether it be equipment, whether it be uh, overtime money. The new law doesn't mean civil forfeiture is over in New Mexico. The ban doesn't apply to federal law enforcement. As for Stephen Skinner, he and his son eventually got their money back, but only after the ACLU fought nearly two years on their behalf. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think when you got up that morning, this is the situation you'd be in? Never in my wildest dreams. I'm a citizen. I worked all my life here in this country. I paid my taxes, never got in trouble. Never had the idea that this would happen.